Hello and welcome again to our YouTube channel. In today's video from the Photoshop series, we are going to see how to make the settings of the flame filter in a pro way. We will start by the basics and then we will develop step by step. And then we will see how to apply it to an uh, image. First, we will start with the pen tool. We will write a straight line like this one, any direction line. And then we will go, just make sure that it is a path and not a shape. And then we will add, we will add a rectangle tool. We'll add a rectangle like this one, it's another path. And simply, we will add a new layer. So our work is always on a new layer, not on the background, because especially when you are working with an image. After that, we'll go to filter, render. Flame. We will start with a very basic filter to understand the settings. So we will go to number two, which is multiple flames along one pass. We will decrease the flame lens. We shall make it 50. Width will make it very small to 5. And intervals we will make it to 100. Now we can see clearly that the flames are just repeated along the path, either this one or this one. And this one is multiple flames along the path. So it's multiple flames here working along uh, our path and in the direction uh, of the path. And there is no option here for an angle So this, because this one is along the path. So we can see that the, it is rotating uh, with the path. Uh, if we uh, increase the, uh, the lens here, for example, to 70. You can see that the length of each flame along the path is changing. And the distance between one flame and the other is indicated by the uh, interval. So if you like to decrease the interval, we decrease it very much, for example, to 10. You can see that the flames are almost Link it together just like if you are making a frame of fire or something like that, you can use these, uh, these settings. Then we will start to increase uh, the width a little bit. We will go to 15. Just when you press tab, uh, tab it is uh, adjusting the settings automatically. Because if you press enter, it will apply to the screen. Now we can see that uh, how it looks uh, your uh, frame. Now, what about the, the other settings? So we will uh, simply go to uh, interval bigger interval 100 again. We'll keep the width to 15 and the uh, lens to 70. Here we are having uh, some randomized uh, lens selection. If we remove the randomizing of the lens, we can see the difference in the effects. Now all the flames are exactly the same lens. There is no variations. Uh, randomizing will make each flame uh, having a separate lens. Now let me explore the other settings. So if we go to the following one, which is multiple flames, one direction. So all the flames will be in one direction, but now we have an option for the angle, which is dimmed here, to set uh, the angle. So we'll select number three. Regardless of the direction of the pass, here it is in the direction of the pass because it's angle zero. Here it is pointing up to zero. Uh, Although the path is in this direction, and here it is in the direction of the path. If we change it, this one to 90, for example, you can see that it is all tilted 90 degrees, and the direction is not varying. So we will explore the next one, which is multiple flames, pass direct. Pass direct here means that it is 90 degrees to the pass, whatever is the direction of the pass. So if we if I select this one, you can see that because now I select it to 90, I will make it zero so as you can see that that's its uh, original uh, setting which is zero it's directly uh, pointing uh, pointing perpendicular to the path so our path here is in this direction it is 90 degrees that's the original setting when i'm putting here zero here our path is in this direction the flames are in this direction this line path is in this direction it's in this direction here that path is in horizontal like this it's downward it's pointing downward so uh, let me now increase the lens a little bit to 90 and we shall randomize the lens now you can see that every uh, flame is coming with a different lens 
and they are all perpendicular to the path. Now, if I selected the fifth one, which is with the various angles, you can see that here it's variable, but it is all in the same direction because the angle is zero. Here, the setting of the angle means the various angles or the different angles will vary within the angle. If I set it to 90, they will vary within 90 degrees. If I set it to 40, they will vary with 40 degrees. So let me select, for example, 90. Now you can see that every angle is coming in, uh, every flame is coming in a different angle and all they are within 90 degrees relative to each other. So if now I decrease the interval, for example, to 50, you can see that the, now the flames are more condensed uh, together. Uh, I will show you one uh, last thing or two things. They are the same. The candle light and the one flame, they are giving the, exactly the same uh, results. You don't have any uh, any setting except the width and uh, algor the algorithm varies a little bit for the intensity of the flame between the one flame along the path and the candle light. We will see the candle light. You can see that only the width is available for you to change and uh, it's generating its own uh, algorithm uh, around the path. You can see that the path here is uh, artistic so you can use it in, in, in other projects. You can increase the path here for example to make it uh, 45. You can see the path is uh, increasing the flame. If I change it to the first one which is the one flame along the path you will find it. It's a different uh, set of algorithm applied it but it's still a single flame coming if you're using a straight line and if you're making a shape it's coming in a random way. Uh, okay. So that's for uh, for the for the pass. If I return again to the various angles, you can see here we have the width 45. So it will turn again to it with the width 45. So you will see the flames more condensed now. You can see now it is uh, more condensed. If you like, we can change this to minimum setting is 10. So I'll change it to 10, which is a minimum setting. But this, uh, when the flames are having a width and having an interval of 10, they are condensed and the intensity of the light is increasing. So you can make it 20 or 30, for example. It will give you a nice uh, effect still. You can see that it's, now it's coming uh, nicer. Uh, there's one uh, last setting here that you can change the color of the flame itself. This is the default color, which is giving this nice uh, flame. Uh, of course, the effect of the flame on the dark colors, you will see it uh, in the battery. But if you like to change this color, due to any reason you need to make uh, a different flame, you can select the blue, you can select uh, yellow or blue, for example. If I selected this one, you've got a totally different flame. It depends on the effects that you are using with your photo. I will cancel this. One all we have done here, and let me add it to uh, another image. If, for example, uh, if you see this nice husky image, we'd like to uh, add a ring of fire around its head. So, so I need to add a ring of fire. So I will come to here. I will select the ellipse tool, and just make sure also it is the path. I'll bring it around its head, like this one. I need to restrize the layer. So add L, Z, L. Okay, and then filter, render, flame. Now it's working. Because now I'm applying it on the, on the layer itself. That's why uh, I'm saying you that it's better to apply it on uh, a new layer. Uh, a new layer. And then we'll apply the uh, filter to this layer. So render. Flame. Okay, I will select this one. Okay. Now you can see that it's coming in a nice way, but if you like to change it or to explore different rings of fire, so you can make a new layer. You can hide this one with the same pass. You can come to filter, render, flame again. If you remember, I said that the path directed is 90 degrees to the path. So if I make this one 90, it will come in the direction of the path itself. Okay, we will make the angle as here. I will make the angle to 90. Now you can see that this one looks more realistic like a ring of fire. 
Okay, if you like this one better, so simply you can press escape to remove the filter. If you like to make it more realistic, you can go to uh, your eraser. Just need to erase it from around the husky ears and legs here. And even to make it a little bit realistic, because this one is a uh, white color, so it's uh, you simply can bring a brush, one of these brushes, and select this one, for example. You can see the set settings of the brushes here, and I'm increasing the spacing so it's not condensed. I can increase the spacing more. I'm selecting the one which is having some dots uh, in it. And for the color of the brush, I select the color uh, from the fire itself, and then I'll add some yellowish color to the white of the high skin. So, to make sure that uh, you have reflections of the fire, it cannot be that much white while passing through the fire. Okay. We can add one more thing. I can uh, here. I can increase. You can see here that's a small opacity. I can increase the the opacity of it. So and I can make one line here with a little bit more opacity, so it appears as a reflection of the main ring of the fire, and the others uh, are the shadow. Thank you for following so far. I hope you had learned a lot of information today that will help you with your coming projects. Uh, join our channel. Join our blog post. Uh, wait for the coming videos and activate the bell. Thank you for following so far.